Good morning. Hello. Hi. Today is the 10th. Today is the 10th. June 10th. Oh, I, I seem to remember there was some Juneteenth or something. Some weird woke nonsense holiday. <laughs> woke. What a joke. Hello. If you happen to have an authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version, go ahead and grab it. Go ahead and grab it. Today's the 10th. Let's read a little out of the 10th proverb today. Okay? I have to warn some of you, your saints, you might see mean bread today. Okay? Before we begin, let me let me uh, get get your authorized version of scriptures. We're going to be reading out of Pro Proverbs ten today. Okay, we're going to have a little expository today. All right, but I gotta mention this. Yesterday was a beautiful day, a very beautiful day. The sun was out. The the weather was perfect. Mid seventies. It's a little chilly today, but it was just a beautiful day yesterday was able to get out and get a little exercise and whatnot, and um, I was, you know, I, I walk everywhere and stuff like that. But while I was out, um, guy, you know, on the phone, uh, talking to a beloved brother, uh, which was uh, <laughs> Prince of the Power of the Air was having his way with that phone conversation to the point where I'm talking about Brother Alexander B. Hartley. I was talking to him, and um, it got so bad, our connection... Uh, that we were both getting irritated, not with each other, but with the fact that the connection was so bad. Anyway, I encounter <laughs> there, there, there are these church buildings all around, okay, on every corner. We we talked about that all all last week. We're gonna we're just gonna stick with this, okay? Um, there's another church building down here, um, Gospel Grace. Church. Uh, we got the Lutheran right here, German Catholic. We got the Methodist right down there, you know. But we got this one over here too that I keep forgetting about. It's 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 got a phallus on it, the steeple. Okay, I'm just telling you like it is, people. You see a, one of them pointy things on a a church building. What is that? That's a phallus, an obelisk. You know, like the one in Washington. It's a phallus. Okay, but that, that's what it is. Okay, it's a phallus house. The, the one right down here on Seminary Street. Okay, and the church is called um, Gospel Grace Church. And we're going to look at that. I'm going, going to show you and expose this devil. And for those of you within the locality here in Woodstick or around, dear sister, a couple of you other guys out there who, um, who are from this locality, <laughs> you might know what I'm talking about. The, the, these guys are devils. Anyway, I, on walkabout, walking down there, happened to meet the pastor of the said phallus house. And you know what, you people out there, in one aspect, I don't blame you for, for having a false conception of who Christ is. Because of these idiot, devil, Jesuit-trained, Christ, professional Christians, like the pastor of this church building over here, uh, I met him. And as I was walking down there, I had, uh, you know, we were having, we had a horrible connection, horrible connection, um, my brother and I, our brother and I, excuse me, excuse me. And I had him right here, and I was talking, and I was walking down there, and the one guy, this guy who I'm um, going to address here, uh, I was quoting as I was walking. You know, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord! <laughs> and I kind of shortened it a little. It's like, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. And he comes up to me. He's like, oh, Sermon on the Mount. Hey, yeah, yeah. And we were talking, and he mentioned something about saints. And it's like, yeah, saints, yeah, saved people, not Christians. It's like, Christians are saints. Uh, uh, what is a saint? Yeah, yeah. And then, we, and then he gave himself away. 
that he's like, well, the Greek, the Greek. And, you know, he mentioned the Greek a couple times, and then I mentioned to him, you know, that I was dispensational, like a saint is supposed to be, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then he got, he got a little uppity. <laughs> I was like, okay, kid. <laughs> okay. And, and, you know, and this is the problem. This is why a saint and a Jesuit trained cemeterian cannot get along. We can't get along with these people, brethren. Uh, I mean, I've encountered many of these Jesuit-trained cemeterians. And what do they do? They throw in their, uh, their education at your face with the attempt to glaze you over with like, oh, wow, this guy. <laughs> All right. And he's like, well, we're all dispensational because there's an Old and a New Testament. <laughs> and I did not react like this. And like I said, Brother Alexander B. Hartley can testify to some of the conversation. But, like I said, the Prince of the Power of the Air was having his way with that conversation because our connection was just atrocious. But, <laughs> but it's like, and I didn't react like this, but I should have. It's like, yeah, bravo, you, you got that one, right? It's all that money that you paid for that uh, piece of paper on your wall and paid off or something like that. And he, and he did, though, he did this. The defensive posture. The closing off in the presence. And, you know, Stanley's like, I am not dispensational. And he's like, I believe that they, you know, he said something about uh, how they uh, care about the Word of God. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, Word of God. And he mentioned the Greek. He mentioned the Greek, of course. Now, people, brethren, brethren, you know this. You lost people. Okay, you want to throw a monkey wrench into one of these Christians when they mention the Greek? Let me show you something. Uh, which one? Which Greek? You see, you see this? Okay. This right here. You see that? This is the 26th edition of the Nestle-Alon Greek text. The one that comes from Rome. Okay. They are today, as we speak, up to either 28 or 29. I asked this young punk over here about that, and I brought that up to him, and again, defensive posture, he looked away. It's like, yeah, and I mentioned to him Metzger, who also has an edition, his own edition of the Greek text, based off of the oldest and best, right? Uh, the oldest and best, right? They're not the best. They're old and in condition like they are in Rome because no one used them because they were junk. See? Okay? All right? All right? Okay? So, it's like, okay, here. This, this is the 26th edition of the Nestle Alon. Okay? This is the j uh I got OBS. So everything backwards. This is the j Ho's interlinear Greek text which is based solely upon, uh, where is that, the we uh, blood clot and fart, <laughs> Westcott and Hort, Greek text. For you to know, the Westcott and Hort with the Nesalalan differ. They say different things. Yes, they do. And some Jesuit-educated individual knows that. Here is the one of the editions of the Textus Receptus. Now, the Textus Receptus is what the authorized version bases itself upon. Okay? But you got to remember, there's 18 or 19 editions also of the Textus Receptus. Okay? You got to remember that. This one is traceable back onto Antioch, whereas this is traceable on to uh, Alexandria, Egypt. And this right here, this is an interlinear. This right here is also an interlinear as well. Okay, the j -Ho's one. But this one is based solely off of West Cotton Hort. This one here, this one, I, I, um, I used to have another one, a bigger one, but I got rid of it. You don't need these. This one is based off of the United, where does it say that? Uh, the United Bible Society. Fourth edition. Fourth edition. Okay. There's at least, uh, to my knowledge, 18 or 19 editions of the Texas Receptus. Okay. There are 28 or 29 of the Nestle Alon. 
there are at least four editions of the United Bible Society's one. Dear friend, dear Christian Jesuit trained cemeterian, which Greek are you talking about? Which Greek? There are many Greeks, Greek editions out there. You say, they say, you know, you know this. Any of you, you've, uh, you've encountered this. They say, the Greek. Which one, buddy? Which Greek are you talking about? See, the Greek and the Hebrew were stepping stones to the cumulation, the final product, uh, as it were. God's word preserved perfectly in English, the authorized version. And you know what these cute little Jesuit trained cemeterians like to do? These guys are, see, these guys are textual critics. Textual criticism is, yea, hath God said. You can read about that in Genesis chapter 3. You go ahead and look that up in the authorized version. But what do, you know what these guys do? They say to a saint, it's like, you're saying that people need to learn English in order to know what God says. Shut up! You go to hell! You throw it right back at them, boy! You're saying that they have to learn Koine Greek and Scriptural Hebrew in order to learn what God said. You throw it right back at them. It's like, you take that little $100,000 piece of paper, wipe it twixt your buttocks with it, and go to hell! I warned you. Don't, 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 you know. And these guys will use this type of rhetoric, which you can see um, uh, demonstrated with a lot of these live streaming Christians who use these big, fancy, smancy words, which we're going to address. Just be, see, and that, that, there's nothing wrong with using fancy, schmancy words. There's nothing wrong with the vocabulary. But see, these Christians, dear people, are doing that to replace something that isn't there. The Lord. Look, look, look at me. Look, come here. look at me, people. I, I understand why you have these reservations about Christ. But see, you people are not give, being given the real Christ of the authorized version of the Scriptures, who is God the Father, the God who saves. The God that is being given to you of Christianity is not the true God. And see, when you people go to attack Christianity, number one, you're basing your attack off of a false premise of something that isn't real anyway. And see, that's the whole point. Christianity has been established by the devil to be made a mocking, laughing stock so that you guys, you atheists, you evolutionists, and all you other guys can usually get a hold of these guys, these Christians, and decimate them with the fact like, hey, your NIV and ESV say different things. Hey, guess what, buddy? Guess what? You're a Greek. 26th edition of the Nestle Alon. The 4th edition of the Bible Societies. Okay? Which one of the Texas Receptus? And here you got blood clot and fart. Okay? Of course they say different things. Of course. Because, because these Greek texts differ with one another. And, see, the hypocrisy of that, you people like to point out. And you know what, there guys who do that? You're right. You're right. But see, these, dear people, you've got to understand this when you're dealing with a Christian, especially a Jesuit educated, Jesuit trained textual critic. you got to remember this. You want to learn... This guy like knock yourself out, knock yourself out. Go right ahead, go to fire, you know, yeah, fire these things up and boom, throw them at your head. Go right ahead, go enjoy yourself. It's not necessary. Those were stepping stones to give us the perfect and errant, given by inspiration, word of God, the authorized version. Okay. 
Don't be intimidated by these people when they use big sounding words and try and, and that's exactly what that punk tried to do yesterday. Okay? He tried to like impress me with his it's like, you know, <laughs> and I never did that. I kept, you know, you know, <laughs> like, dude, shut up. <laughs> dude, shut up. And, and, and I beg your pardon, brethren. I'm not a novice anymore. <laughs> I'm not a novice. All right. <laughs> I'm not, I've, I've dealt with many, many of these Jesuit trained cemeterians. You know what I did? Here's what you do. Number one, they bring up the Greek. Stop them. As I did. Which Greek? It's Greek. Hmm? Like I said, like I said, people. Hey, Andy, you idiot. Okay, there's at least 28 or 29 of these. Dude, that's the whole line. Okay, you got blood clot and fart. You got at least four of the United Bible Society. They don't say the same things. They differ. Okay. <laughs> Garbage. They're garbage. The Texas Receptus, which the authorized version is based off of, like I said, there's at least 18 or 19 editions of these. Now, these basically agree with one another. They do. More so than the ones that come from Rome. But see, the point is, this was the stepping stone for this. Okay? You want to get the Word of God in another tongue? You use what's perfect, the authorized version, and use this to translate into other languages. Okay? But see, try to talk to a Jesuit-trained cemeterian. And as we'll see that this individual, he went to Knox Theological Cemetery School, and it's like, well, that's not Jesuit. This, dude, listen to me. Listen to me, dude. Okay, the Jesuits are infiltrators. Okay, they're fake. They're meant. They. I mean, check out the uh, playlist with about Catholicism. Okay, they're Jesuits infiltrate. They pretend to be something they are not. Okay, they the Jesuit order controls all the cemetery schools and public education and private education in America at least. Okay, that that's that's the fact. That's a fact. And when someone goes to like a Knox uh, theological seminary, I don't care if it was founded, they, they claim it was founded like by that one Knox guy who was a Baptist. And uh, you got uh, Ruckman's thing too. But look at what happened to them. Okay? It's a joke. It's a joke. All right? Proverbs 10, verses 13 on to 21. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. And unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So, so, in the lips of him that hath understanding, departing from evil, wisdom, fear of the Lord, is found. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Someone who doesn't depart from evil. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We want verses 7 on to verse 12. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 7 on to verse 12. If you have a ribbon marker in your scripture, please use it today. Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trust to himself that he is Christ's, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ's, even so are we Christ's. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord hath given us for edification and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed, that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak, and his speech contemptible. 
let such an one think this, that as we are in word by letters when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. If you were to meet me out there, the one that you're looking at, the one that's ranting and raving at you, you it's one, we're, I'm one and the same. Okay, I don't put on a facade. I don't put on the act or what I no. What you see is what you get. She says with trained cemeterian, put on a preaching voice and stuff like that. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get vocal like this out in public. Yes, I do. I mean, I, many people can witness to that. Okay? All right? See, there's a transparency within saints. Jesuit educated cemetery and pastors. It's the theater. Christians here on YouTube. It's the theater. They got to have the, you know, you have your stuff that you wear, you know, to preach on in your videos. Uh, yeah. That's been thrown at me. It's like, dude, I, this is what I wear anyway. Okay? Talk about petty. Talk about petty juvenile things. Okay? Let's continue. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. And see, it's all with these Christians that go to who blow their money on getting a $100,000 piece of paper. And that's not an exaggeration, dude. That's not an exaggeration. Depending on the cemetery school that you're thinking about going to, because that's what these idiot Christians tell you you need. You need the credentials in order to be a preacher. Sounds who? Well, Lord says, and they go to then they go to First Peter, you know, or uh, you know, that's just like, you know, every ordinance a man make sure you keep. It's like, dude, no, that's not what that's talking about in regards to being a preacher or speaking the word of God. Okay? But in John chapter 7, just one verse, John chapter 7, one verse, verse 24, our Lord says, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. I've heard people say, well, in order to be a pastor or a preacher, you need a piece of paper. So, the visual stimuli, again, right? Yeah, the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found, departing from evil. I, I'm telling you, okay, when in, in regards to knowing who Christ is, you go to one of these uh, cemetery schools, you're going to learn who the false Christ is, okay, <laughs> the, uh, Satan, okay, that man of sin eventually, okay, but you're not going to learn who the true Christ is. And you're going to learn a different gospel. And no scripture or no Bible is perfect. Okay? That's what you get from the Jesuits. That's what you get from these modern cemetery schools. Okay? In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding, departing from evil. These cemetery schools nowadays, especially, are all evil. I don't give a rap what they were at the initial inception of them were intended to be. Okay? That's an argument that a lot of people like, you know, to defend this joke called Christianity. Well, that's not what it was at the first. What is it today? What is it today? The body of Christ, the church of the living God, which is the pillar and ground of the truth, will go full circle. We never called ourselves Christians. There's your Christians over there. I try to impress you with fancy rhetoric. To impress you that the, well, the Greek. <laughs> the Greek. That always irritates me. Which one? He never answered the question, by the way, too. Just to let you know, he never answered it. He never answered it. You know, and another question you ask these people when they bring up the Greek, okay? When they bring up the Greek, immediately. You lost people, okay? Christianity is not the way. It isn't. It's not the way. Jesus Christ, he is 
the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Christianity does not give you the true Christ. Okay? But ask them when the New Testament began. This is a very simple question with a very simple answer. It, the scripture answers that question. You know what that guy said to me? With Christ. Vague answer. When we first started talking and I said something to him and he said to me snidely, it's like, oh, that's a vague, vague answer. It's like, you, 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 look, you look who's talking there, little boy. <laughs> well, he's like, well, it, with Christ, what does that mean? See, someone who's against rightly dividing the word of truth think that everything, and I didn't get that because he cut it off, and, and thankfully so. Because, I, you know, I've given a little bit more time, I would have gone at that guy. <laughs> because I, you know, always walk around with a sword, I pull it out, and it's like, hey, okay, let's, you want to talk, kid? Okay. I, I, I don't, I, I, you know, spiritual and body. And here's another thing, too. I'm sure the guy was a Trinitarian that believed in one God and <laughs> three persons. Idiot. But I asked him about, like I said, when, the, when did the New Testament begin? And he said, with Christ. What does that mean? With the birth. That's not the truth. And then it's like, um, I said, when did the New Testament begin? Another thing he did, it's like, you mean New Covenant? It's like, no, New Testament. New uh, Testament and Covenant are two different things. Two different things. And I threw that at him. And he stumbled and bumbled a little bit. Okay. See, most of the times, these Christian cemeterians trained by Jesuits are not expecting to encounter a saint. They're not. Because the reality is, sooner or later, because a saint, a saved individual, who adheres to the authorized version, the scriptures will decimate the arguments of the Jesuit trained cemeterian every time. And they know that. They know that. But he said to me, with Christ, meaning the birth, it's through the death of the testator. That's when the New Testament began. But see, what he did, well, Testament and covenant are the same thing. No, they are not. No, they are not. In your little Jesuit world, they may be, but in the real world, they are not. They are two different things. Okay? Let's continue. Proverbs 10, verse 14. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. The fool says in his heart there is no God. And again, being foolish is behaving, acting, speaking as if you say in your heart there is no God. See that a lot with a lot of Christians, these uh, uh, streaming Christians too, who exemplify a lot of the Jesuit rhetoric that I encountered yesterday. Okay? Verse 15. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. Matthew 6. <laughs> and, I, and I mentioned something to, to him about the Sermon on the Mount. We didn't get involved in that. Okay, again, and you're going to see, I'm going to take you to the website of this disgusting church building over there. Um, so if, you ever, if you're ever in Woodstock, Illinois, you, you know, your sister and you guys here in Woodstock, uh, you <laughs> stay away from these idiots. Okay, Matthew chapter six verses nineteen on the verse for uh, Matthew chapter six verses nineteen on the verse twenty-four. Okay, and incidentally, and I never asked this guy this because he cut off the conversation, rightfully so. And as you know, I shook his hand. He's like, "Well, I don't want to keep you." It's like, "Okay," shook his hand, and I said to him, "I hope you have a great life, pal." You know, brethren. The impossible is possible with God. But, you know, when you when you encounter a Jesuit-trained cemeterian, and one of the... And that and guy even brought up the word it said, like, the, uh, the Catholic tradition. It's like, right away, like, you've been soiled by Jesuits. These guys are... 
it's hard to speak with one of these guys because, like I've said to you before, all they do is rub in their face, rub in your face their education, and you are supposed to be glazed over with their uh, fancy schmancy rhetoric. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 on verse 24. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Thieves! Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the light. He is the door. You know, most people like to boot the door, our Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> brilliant, and climb up some other way, a thief and a robber. Okay? And the Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. Faith is mentioned one time in the Sermon on the Mount. He had not died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And see, when you're not dispensational like that, you get, someone who rightly divides the word of truth and knows the scriptures will decimate these people. You tuck tail and run. Okay? See, yesterday what happened was two opposing spirits collided. The spirit of the world, which is that spirit of Antichrist, and the spirit of God, the Father, who dwells within me. Two opposing spirits collided yesterday. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where's your treasure? See, a Jesuit trained cemeterian, their treasure is down here in their $100,000 piece of paper, in their knowledge that people have to come to them, okay? The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Single. Singular focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore that light that is in thee in dark is therefore, if therefore that light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters. Oh, and, and, and see the sleazy believest, easy believers, and just believe and receive crowd, tried to do this. They want their cake and eat it too. Okay? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Okay? Ye cannot serve God, God and mammon. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Not Ephesians. We want verses 5 on to verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 7. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. These pastors in these buildings, they're not, they're preaching themselves. Well, the Greek and the Catholic tradition. <laughs> You know, and I'm sure if I would have asked this individual, he would have been glad. Well, I've been to such a place and Knox, you know, boasting himself. Look at me. Look at my knowledge. Look at what I've learned. Yeah, how God said. And <laughs> and I'm sure if I would have asked him, okay, how are they made right with God in the Garden of Eden? How are they made right? I'm sure this guy would have said, by grace through faith. Ugh! That would have set me off. <laughs> and, and, and that's good too because, like I said, had I asked this individual that and he would have said, by grace through faith, I would have. I would have gone off on him. <laughs> I would have. And it would not have been pretty. <laughs> like I said, our dear brother, uh, dear young man from Croatia, if the Lord, you know, if and when, uh, he, he's going to be a lot more gentle on that <laughs> than I am. Okay, I, I do. I, 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 I have limits, man. <laughs> I do. And especially when it's mono mono and you say to me, 
It's like, oh, by grace of faith and God intervene. You shut your mouth. You don't know anything you're talking about. You want to go into the scriptures, pal? Let's go. Let's see what the scriptures say. Well, that's the King James. That oh, just you shut up. Okay? Refute this. Refute it. Huh? Come on. Anyway. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us, i.e. the Jesuit order. Yea, hath God said. Look at my degree. Uh, look at my degree. I know the Greek. That is, that is one of the most stupidest things. And hey, you lost people if you make it this far? Remember that. Remember that when you're talking to a Christian pastor. Remember that. Throw at them. Which Greek? Watch how they squirm. They go, the oldest and best. Oh, the ones that are whole, held in Rome, huh? Yeah. Throw it at them. Go ahead. Hey, hey, Dave. You still watching me? You, you throw that at one of these Christians, man. Go ahead. Hey, hey, seriously. Any of you self-theists out there, you evolutionists, when you encounter a Christian pastor, pastor, okay, go ahead and throw that at him. Do it. Go out for it. I encourage you to. The Greek, which one? And again, dear friend, dear friend, United Bible Society, blood clot and fart, uh, nestle along. They don't say the same thing. They contradict each other. Okay? They do. They do. All right? Which Greek? Is it, is it this one? The 26th of the Nestle Alliance? Is it blood clot and fart? Huh? Which, which one of the United Bible Societies is it? Huh? Which one? Which one? Hey, Andy. Which one? Which one? Which one? Okay? Which one? Galatians chapter 2. See, when you go the way of the cross, the elect way of the cross, and the Lord saves you, he seals you with himself. You have got the Father dwelling within you. We've covered this all last week. Okay? Christ is in you. He is the Holy Ghost. He is the Father. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Like I said, that, 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 that putz over there, I, I'm sure he's a Trinitarian. He's, he, he's trained by Jesuits, of course. Of course. <laughs> I'm sure he's a Trinitarian. But thankfully, seriously, thankfully the conversation didn't get that far. Because he, 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 he's serving Satan. Okay? Like I said, two opposing spirits collided yesterday. And before it got ugly, <laughs> yea, hath God said, broke it off. Okay? But Galatians chapter 2. And see, the Spirit of Truth, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, He will guide you into all truth. The Scripture. Okay? Galatians 2, 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 on to 29. Even the mystery which hath been hidden from other ages and from generations, but is now made manifest in his saints. Ages, plural. Different dispensations. <laughs> I don't believe it. I, I, I'm against dispensational theology. Well, you're an idiot. And you're a devil, and you're deceiving people, and you're guiding them to hell with another Jesus and with another gospel. It is not by grace through faith in the beginning uh, in the Garden of Eden. It's not by grace through faith during the kingdom of heaven. It's not by grace through faith 
uh, during the time of Jacob's, Jacob's trouble. It was not by grace through faith. It was not during the patriarchal period. A lot of people like to um, confuse that. But see, ultimately, the death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened yet. And they say, well, they were looking forward to the cross. Uh, uh, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but, is, but now is made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach. You've watched any of these videos? Okay, I, I'm not preaching to you an education from the Jesuits. You go to one of these uh, phallus houses with one of these Jesuit trained cemetarian, they're you're being, they're preaching their Jesuit education, yea, hath God said to you. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, fear the Lord, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, not sinlessly perfect. Perfect care! Whereunto I labor, striving also, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. See, we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That is not work salvation. We're once saved, always saved. What does that mean? Jesus, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, has sealed us with himself. We are to work out what he has put into us, the saint, himself. See, that's, that's what that means. Okay? That's what that means. All right? Go back to uh, Proverbs 10. Picking up at verse 16. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life. The fruit of the wicked to sin. And again, about verse 15, the wealth, treasure. Get it? That's why we went through that whole thing. The rich man's wealth is his strong city, city of the great king foundation built upon the Lord Jesus Christ precious wisdom the fear of the Lord you get it the labor of the righteous tendeth to life the fruit of the wicked to sin he is in the way of life that keepeth instruction but he that refuseth reproof earth Oh, you gotta love that one. And of course, John 14, 16, uh, 6, excuse me, John 14, verse 6, just one verse, just one verse, John 14, verse 6. The, the, the chapter where our Lord refers to himself, tells you that he's the Father. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 17, 17, sanctum, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word, lowercase w, is truth. Okay? Capital W word appears seven times in the scriptures. Six times in the Bibles. Okay? Okay? Six is the number of man. The Bibles are not inspired by God. <laughs> the scriptures are. Okay? All right? But, but, all right, all right. Uh, where are we? Uh, where, where are we? I just lost my place. Uh, uh, oh, okay. And now go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verses 15 on to verse 17. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. A child. Bring up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Okay? We are to bring up the children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. What happens today? You hand your children off to Jesuits, whether the public education or private education, to kinder care, so the mother and the father both can go out and work and keep them jobs. 
And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. The Apocrypha, I'm not using my Cambridge today. The Apocrypha, okay, which was in the authorized version. Yes, it was. Okay, it's not inspired scripture. The Apocrypha contradicts with the established canon of scripture. The Apocrypha Catholic is not scripture. Okay, and it's interesting because the Apocrypha is where you find the majority of the Catholic doctrine. Okay, uh, the Roman Catholic Church is Satan's church, people. You need to wake up. Okay, all right, you, you, you need to wake up. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, number one, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Okay? He that is in the way of life, he is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof, earth. Where, where do you get instruction? By the Spirit. Which one? God is a Spirit. Oh, but see, you read a Bible. God, God is spirit. I'm sure if I were to ask that putz about that, about John, or John chapter 4, he'd say, God is spirit. No, God is a spirit. Okay? How, see, how are you supposed to discern which is which? See, the Jesuit educated Christian pastor over there infers to you that you've got to go to them because they, they've been trained. By Jesuits, by men. Like I've been asked before when dealing with these people. Where are you sending them? Where are you sending them? Where are they inferring? You need to send them to a church building so they can learn truth. Uh, people, 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 don't go to a church building. Don't, don't go to a church building. The church is the body of Christ. Which, which that, that guy got right. Then why are you in a building? With a phallus on it. Huh? It's, you're a professional Christian. It's your career. <laughs> it's like, where are you sending them? Where are you sending them? What's the inference? It's like you need to send them to a building. No, God forbid. You send someone to a church building, you're going to kill them. Spiritually, that is. No, where am I sending them? <laughs> uh, to, the, to, the, to the scriptures, number one. To the scriptures that lead to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Wait right here. Here. The authorized version. God 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 will get a hold of you through the scriptures. Trust me. Trust me. Okay? So yeah, I'm you know pointing them to the Lord Jesus Christ through the authorized version of the scriptures. What are these Christians doing? They're pointing you to the to the devil through a building that has a Ferris on it. Usually. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 18 now. And these guys, oh, these subtle, smooth guys. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Hatred. It is hatred, dear friend. It is an act of pure, unadulterated hatred against you. If I were to tell you, God loves you, that's hatred. What? God does not love you. No, he does not. His love is there for you. But you have to make the choice to go the way of the cross. He doesn't grab you or, make, or coerce you by gunpoint. you got to make the right decision. Okay? It's hate to tell you God loves you. Self-theists can figure that one out. Okay? Self-theists can figure that one out. It's hatred. But they hide it. Look at that verse. He that hideth hatred with lying lips. God loves you unconditionally. By grace through faith from the beginning to the end. <laughs> everything, 
everything in Scripture is doctrinal for us today. That, when you don't rightly divide the word of truth, that's what you're saying. But see, you, you got to go to a Jesuit trained cemetery to learn how to decipher these things. Galatians chapter 6. Uh, Gal Galatians chapter 1. See, you people, pay attention, listen to me. You encounter a Jesuit trained cemetery, a Christian is like, hey, you need to go to our church building. Okay? You encounter a Christian who tells you God loves you. You know, that uh, the, all of Scripture is written to me. No, it isn't. All of Scripture is written for you, but not to you specifically. Okay? There's a difference. Oh, oh there's a big difference. Big difference. But see, what does Christianity do? Galatians 1, verse 6, on verse 12. I marvel. That, and that's not... Never mind. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Save yourself. You're elect. God go to a church that Satan founded. Rome. Which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. It's a perversion. The gospel that that guy over there at this church building is giving to his congregants is another Jesus and another gospel. Another Jesus. He's a, I'm sure he's a Trinitarian. That's another Jesus. Another gospel. Just believe and receive. Just believe and receive. Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. The repentance is turning away from yourself. That you are your own God to the God who is. Another gospel. Another gospel. God loves you unconditionally. You're saved and you just don't know it yet. It's laughable. It's not funny. But see, you people, because you've been deceived by Christianity, uh, influenced by Rome, and you don't even know it. Okay, let's continue. But though we are an angel from heaven, and no marvel, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. No marvel also that his ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness, like that, that sweet little Jesuit trained pastor guy over there. Okay. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. And Christianity is accursed. Sorry. For do I now persuade men or God? Right there, verse 10. Do I, or do I seek to please men? <laughs> no, I'm not looking for friends. No. The ones that I have, dear brethren, praise the Lord for them. No, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to do what the Lord wants me to do. Tell you the truth. Right out there at that building, they got a camper set up that says coffee on it. When I was in Missouri, Shalbina, and I went into that church building and saw those guys with the, uh, you know, having their service over there, of uh, the one building down there, brother knows which one that is, uh, they had coffee, donuts, ple men pleasing. You know, don't. Don't scare them. We want to get them into the building so we can lie to them about tithing, get their money, and teach them another Jesus and another gospel. For if I pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Where did God tell anyone to go to the Jesuits, to go to man in order to preach? They, they, they like to go and twist 
in First Peter chapter two. Well, you know, obey every ordinance of man. Read the context. It's, it has nothing to do with preaching the gospel. Actually, the contrary is true. Okay, it has nothing in context in First Peter chapter two, and also in Romans chapter thirteen. It has nothing to do with preaching the gospel. Okay, the contrary to that is true. Not what they tell you. But how would you know? Verse eleven. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. No, it isn't. For neither received, not for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ will reveal Himself to you through the authorized version of the Scriptures. See, this gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross. Turning away from your own self onto the Lord. Taking responsibility that your hand held the hammer and the nail and your hand put the crown of thorn on his head. And the fear that you're going to have to give an account to him. And unless he saves you, you're going to hell. And see, that in you ought to cause a breaking in one fell swoop. And in that broken state... Savory, which many out there are against. They call that work. Proverbs 23. And see these Jesuit trained cemeterians, these guys that go to these cemetery schools, you know, I don't care what you say. Well, Knox is not a Catholic. Uh, Knox Cemetery School is not a Catholic cemetery. The Jesuits control the curriculum, okay? They have infiltrated, they are teaching the people, and they, they come out with, yea, have God said, they come out textual critics. Even Smiley Dave from Chick Publications can testify to that, Okay? Look, people, cemetery schools, seminary schools are evil. They are controlled, operated, manipulated by the Jesuit order. Rome, your enemy, Satan's church. Prove it to you that that guy over there, what's, what's the perfect standard? The Greek. Go away. I, like I said, and like I said, man, you know, I say to these people, when I encounter that, uh, you know, if I don't go off on them, <laughs> and I have. So, like I said to the dude, dude, I hope you have a great life. When someone doesn't want to hear the truth from you, the impossible is possible with God. Maybe, maybe somewhere down the line, uh, the Lord will use another saint in another time at another thing when that individual might be more broken than when you... And see, that's one thing you got to keep in mind, brother. Okay? I don't know with some of the incidences where people would not hear, or that I messed up, that maybe the Lord in another situation brought along another saint. Okay? That's a possibility. But, you know, remember, when you encounter someone who will not hear, who doesn't want to hear... Seriously. It's like, well, I hope you have a great enjoy your life, dude. Enjoy your life. You know. Roll your up roll your up in another, another big fatty. Get yourself some John Daniels. Go and have yourself a Big Mac from McDonald's. Go ahead and watch Star Wars. Okay. Go ahead and listen to Turd Day. Mm -hmm. And just enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. Go to your little phallus house. Gorge yourself on your donuts and coffee. I hope they give you at least good coffee. Okay? And just enjoy your life. Enjoy yourself. Have a great life, man. Because this is the best life you're going to have. And seriously. You know? I, I, I've been doing that quite often. 
I, well, I always do that when, in certain circumstances, but like when, you know, like I told you before, I've been commenting on videos here recently, um, like the one Shemetic uh, Japanese guy, uh, it's like, I told him, it's like, hey, you know, the, what are you going to do? Model, Japanese model. Beautiful young man. But I said to him, it's like, what are you going to do when jewels cease to sparkle and gold loses its luster? Meaning, what are you going to do when that pretty little face of yours, okay? Now, granted, he's, he's Semitic, he has, you know, whatever, but, uh, you know, it's like, what are you going to do? It's like, hope you have a great life, kid. Remember, Christianity is all about you having your best life now. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23, verses 6. On to verse 9. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. Don't, don't, don't gobble up with these Christian cemetery, Jesuit cemeterian, Jesuit trained pastors give you in these buildings. It's not truth. It's, it's the thing of rat poison. 95% truth, I should say. 5% poison, but that 5% poison is what will kill you. Okay? A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Speak not in the ears of a fool. He will despise the wisdom of thy words. That kid over there at the church building, he's a fool. He says in his heart there is no God. Even though he would protest, he's like, I believe in God. But see, you are your own standard. Which Bible is perfect there, buddy? Which Greek are you talking about, buddy? Huh? Saved by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden? You're one God in three persons? Are you nuts? He's a fool. He's a fool. And there was no point in talking with him. Proverbs, and again, Proverbs 28, verses 25 and 26. Okay? Because you got to remember what a fool is, people. What is a fool? Fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Speak not, verse 9 in Proverbs 23, Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Proverbs 28, <laughs> 25 and 26, He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife, but he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. That guy over there, his name was Nate. You'll see it. I'm going to name him. He won't see this. If he does, good. Good. He's a devil. But, see, you believe in your own heart? I trust in my heart. You're a fool. A fool says in his heart there is no God. But see, you got to remember, people, what is it to be anti, to be against, and to replace? You're against God, and you've replaced him with so you've replaced him with your Jesuit education and yea hath God said textual criticism. Again, answer me. Which Greek is perfect? The oldest and best. Oh, Sinaiticus and Vaticanus and the left. Right? Smiley Dave from Chick Publications didn't. He really did. Give him credit on this. About Sinaiticus, um, that it was a forgery. He did really good work on that. Um, Sinaiticus and Vaticanus contradict each other and are missing entire books. Of you know that thing where the Jesuit cemeterian would say to you about, what is it? Oh, oh, what is it? Mark 11 or, or yeah, Mark 6 or 11, like a whole chunk of it isn't in there. And they say this is not, it's been added or something like that. That's because it's not in one, either the... Texas, uh, no, excuse me, it's not in either the Vaticanus or Sinaiticus, okay? I forget which one that is, 
but they, there's a portion in Mark, uh, it's, it's either 6 or chapter 6 or 11, where a big chunk of the beginning is not there, and they say this is not in the oldest and best. Uh, you, you're saying that's not in Vaticanus or Sinaiticus, one of the two, which is in Rome, which contradict each other. They're not the best. They're the oldest because no one used them because they're garbage. And that's the basis of these. The minuscule. The majority of the Greek manuscripts that are out there agree with the Textus Receptus. But then again, the Textus Receptus was the foundation to give us the perfect standard in English, the seventh and final purification of the Word of God. See, a Jesuit trained cemeterian will tell you that there is no perfect standard or the oldest and best, best or the originals, that's another one, which they themselves will admit readily that they don't exist. So when they say, well, the originals are, are what was inspired, but they don't exist. So there is no perfect standard. A Christian tells you there is no perfect standard. That's why they, and see, that's Catholic in and of itself. Second Corinthians 11. Let's continue. Second Corinthians 11. Second Corinthians 11. Verses 19 and 20. Ye, for ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. Seeing ye yourselves are wise. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, professing yourselves to be wise, you became fools. You progressive individuals. You educated evolutionists and atheists. You Christians. Ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. You see this with the easy believest uh, live streaming Christians. Okay? For ye suffer. If a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. Yeah, because you guys know better. Because you are your own standard. Therefore you, you suffer fools gladly. People who say in their heart there is no God and exude that that comes from Rome. But you suffer it. Go along with it. Because, you know, you are your own God. <sighs> Verse 19 in Proverbs chapter 10. Now, now here's where I want you to pay attention. Okay, Let's read 18 and 19 in context. He that hateth, hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Fool, key word, says in his heart there is no God. Hatred, it's hatred to tell you that God loves you. Slander, one God in three persons, that's slandering. God is one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, not three persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? That's slander. It's slanderous to say that it's by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden, and it's by grace through faith during the um, time of Jacob's trial. Grace through faith, grace through faith during the kingdom of heaven, when you can see the Lord Jesus Christ on the throne, Okay, that's slander. That's slandering. That's slandering the Lord who is. Okay? But fool is the key word here in this context. Okay? In the multitude, and we're going to read on to verse 20 for the sandwich, context. Actually, let's read on to verse 21, okay? Let's read on to verse 21. From verse 18 again. Okay, here's the context. He that hideth hatred with lying lips... God loves you. 
Okay? God loves you. You were once saved, always saved in the Garden of Eden during the patriarchal period under the law. That's a lie. It's, it's, it's a lie. God loves you. No, he doesn't. And he that uttereth a slander is a fool. God in three persons. That's a slander. That's slander. Okay? In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Verse 20. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many. But fools die for want of wisdom. Want of wisdom. They don't want it, meaning that they're wanting it as something that is a necessity. What is that? The fear of the Lord. Now look at verse 19. Look at verse 19. Look closely at verse 19 itself. Verse 18. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Someone preaching to you another Jesus and another gospel is what? He's lying and uttereth a slander. He's a fool. Okay? Contrast. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin. Acts 20. One verse. Acts 20. Verse 9. Acts 20. You know, I, it's been long, <laughs> long, <laughs> every pun intended there, been something that I've been attacked for. It's like, no one wants to listen to you for two hours. I'll give you that. No one wants to hear my annoying voice right there, Frankie boy. <laughs> But, you know, no one wants to listen. Okay. But see, here's the thing. I'm giving you the scripture. I'm giving you the scripture. Acts 20. Just one verse. Verse 9. And there sat a window, there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep, as Paul was long Preaching. And if you continue to read this, he preached his, he, Paul was preaching well past midnight into the breaking of the day. And there are those of you, it's like, and I'll give you that. Some of you don't like the tone of my voice. I'll give you that, fine. Okay, fine. But see, Paul was preaching for many hours. Many hours. The multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. Okay? As Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. Long preaching. And there's no sin in long preaching the Word of God. Okay? There's no sin in that. But as we had already read in Proverbs chapter 23... Verse 9, speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Look at verse 19 again. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin. Paul was long preaching. There's no sin in that when you're preaching the word of God. Okay? But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. And Matthew chapter 7, verse 6, one verse, Matthew chapter 7. One verse, verse 6, Matthew 7, verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Why? Lest they trample them under their feet and turn and rend you again. Rend, tear. Dog is male. Swine is female. Okay? Bam! Eh, shut up. Shut up. Go to 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. Verse 22. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog, pay attention, is turned to his male own vomit again, 
and the sow swine that was washed to her female wallowing in the mire. Give not that which is holy unto dogs, lest they trample, uh, uh, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Why? Lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. When someone doesn't want to hear the truth, a dog and a swine or a sow, hope you enjoy your life, buddy. I hope you have a great life. Go to the next one. Okay. But now I want to show you this. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Now, again, a lot of the time when people like to find contradiction in the scripture, Bibles and even the oh, the Muslims can find, South Theists can find contradictions in the Bible. In the Bible, excuse me, in the Bibles. Okay, plural. Okay. This is the scripture. Distinction. Okay. But when it comes to the scripture, okay, when it comes to the scripture, there's no contradiction. You either have to rightly divide it or read it carefully. In the multitude of words, verse 19, there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. Ecclesiastes 5, verses 1 on verse 3. Okay, now I want you to pay attention. Pay attention. Context. Verse 1 and verse 3. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. $100,000 piece of paper on their wall. Fool says in his heart, there is no God. For they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth. Put your name right there after that. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. But in the multitude of words I want it not sin. Okay? But he that refraineth his lips is wise. When someone doesn't want to hear them. Okay? Now look at verse 3 here in Ecclesiastes 5. For a dream cometh through the multitude of busyness, and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. Fool, key right there. Fool who says in his heart there is no God. That Jesuit trained cemeterian says in his heart there is no God, even though he would protest and say, I believe in God. But what's your standard? You, your education, not the Lord. So, he's like, well, the Greek says this, and, you know, the Greek word, and he even used one, like, blah, blah, blah. It's like, they, they shut up, okay? He will use a multitude of words. I, I like the comparison of this, the Amplified Bible. Jesus wept. Two words. The Amplified Bible would use 15 words to describe the two words that the Scripture uses, okay? It's a perfect example. Okay? A fool's voice is known by the multi fool look at those two verses. Yeah, it's okay, get, you know, you know, do one of these. Compare scripture with scripture. Verse 19. Okay? We told or are told what a fool is in verse 18. And then verse 19, in the multitude of words there wanteth not sin. But see, in verse 3, and in Ecclesiastes 5, for a dream cometh through the multitude of business. And a fool, who says in his heart there is no God, his voice is known by multitude of words. See, Paul was long preaching. He was preaching the word of God. These guys in the buildings, they're preaching you to you Jesuitism. One God and three persons. God loves you unconditionally. All of scripture is written specifically to you. It's written for you, it's not all written specifically to you. That's a lie. You can't rightly divide the word of truth. And this did it, punk. Like, well, I'm a guess. 
dispensational theology. You, they, they're, they're, they love the Word of God. <laughs> what is the Word of God, pal? Didn't ask that question, of course. Okay, okay. Ecclesiastes ten, verses one and verse three. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. Apothecary, a uh, perfume, sweet smell. Dead in trespasses and sins, like the Jesuit trained cemetery and pastor over there, and what he's doing to his congregants. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. And see, people go to these guys and they get the deer in the, the uh, uh, Mark the Messenger deer in the headlights look when he starts spouting off about the Greek and blah, 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 and the Catholic, Catholic tradition. And they're like, what did you do? Hello? Okay? See, that's the byproduct of this Mentality, you have to be trained by men. In order. Now, like I've said to you before, if you're going to be a heart surgeon, you don't want to learn from Bob the mechanic, mechanic how to do heart surgery, okay? All right? <laughs> All right? You know, you want to learn how to uh, split someone's busted arm? Okay, yeah, that, that's a good. But, I mean, when it comes to preaching the death, burial, and resurrection, the contrary to what you are told from the Christian in the phallus house is true. The contrary to it is true. A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. Jesus sitteth on the right hand of God. Okay? Right hand, left hand, okay? That doesn't mean if you're a southpaw, you're uh, satanic or whatever, okay? That doesn't mean that. Okay, just using, he, Lord's using that as an example. And right here, verse 3. Verse 3. Yea, also, when he that is a fool walketh by the way. Ah. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. That guy over there, Nate, Okay, that's his name. You're going to see his face. I'm exposing this guy. Okay, he's a fool. He is his own standard. His Jesuit education is his standard. He's like, well, Knox is not a Catholic. Yeah. It's run and operated by Jesuits. Prove it. Textual critic. The Greek. Which one, buddy? Which one? That's Jesuit. That's Catholic. That's Satan. Yeah, have God said. Okay? So, but see, when he tries, see, with you people who have been deceived for centuries and being told what Christ isn't from Rome, you, you guys, like I told you before, you guys have been effect, infected by Rome and you don't even know it. And this guy, you know, one of these guys uh, glazes you over. And uh, at least the self theist, you know, who uh, readily is like, I am my own God, whatever. And they call these guys on this stuff. They're made to look like laughing stocks. That's Satan's goal. So that when that man of sin, the son of perdition, I'm sure if I would have asked that kid, it's like, oh, I'm sure you're against the redemption. I'm sure you would have. I'm sure you would have. That's Jesuit. See, that's Jesuit there, people. Okay? All right? All right? <laughs> but see, when he tries to say that he's something that he isn't, and he encounters one of us, a saint, yea, also when he that is a fool walketh by the way, his wisdom, that guy's wisdom is earthly, sensual, devilish. The wisdom of a saint is the wisdom that cometh from the Lord. His wisdom faileth him, and he saith to everyone that he is a fool. A saint armed with the scriptures will every time decimate one of these Jesuit trained cemeterians. 
they know that. There has to be a working knowledge of truth there for some of these guys to, to be as evil as they are. Never forget that. A lot of these devils that I've encountered over the years, um, they, they know what the true gospel is, but they purposely speak against it. Okay? All right, now go to Matthew chapter 6. Just one verse. Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. Matthew chapter 6, verse 7, one verse. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions. Hail Mary, full of grapes, blessed be the fruit of the loom. Vain repetition. Some of the Hebraic Jewish prayers, based off of the rabbinic teaching, not scriptural Judaism. If they were adherents of scriptural Judaism, they would be Messianic Jews. Saints. Okay? Vain repetition. Hail Mary, full of grapes. It's not vain repetition for you to be praying for a brother or a sister or for someone out there repeatedly to God. That's not vain repetition. Okay? But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. And the fool's voices are known by multitude of words. Paul was long preaching. What was he preaching? He was preaching the scripture. These guys are preaching Jesuitism. They're preaching their education. Not the Lord. Not the Lord. 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. Verses 19 and 20. Yet, in the church, the body of Christ, the, not the uh, building, but the people, yet in the church I had rather, fi uh, rather speak five words with my understanding than by my voice that by my voice I might teach others also, than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Uh, what was a uh, certain unknown tongue? Meaning what? Okay? An example. Just an example. Think about this. One of these guys using all this fancy rhetoric where you need a dictionary to just follow along, okay? Using words technical words like exergesis and, um, you know, and uh, um, homiletics and stuff like that. You know, fancy schmancy words trying to put off that they have the Spirit, the Lord in them. But see, like I said, there's nothing wrong with using uh, complex technical words. There's nothing wrong with that. But see, these guys are doing it to give you something that isn't there in them the first place. Okay? Brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. Grow up. Grow up. Grow up. Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two, seventeen on to black. <laughs> Can't read my own writing. <laughs> Chapter uh, 2, 2 Peter 2, 17 on to verse 19. Now, first Peter. These are wells without water. The water that they do offer you, if any, are fouled by the feet of the Vatican. Clouds that are carried with the tempest. To whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh every single one of these church buildings. Through much wantonness, it's all about you, God loves you. Those that were clean escape from them 
who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for whom a man is overcome the same as he brought in bondage. And of course, when you get to that verse, get in the habit, brother, of going to immediately Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness, you Christians, who are you servant to? Just what order? Man, saints are servants unto the Lord Jesus Christ. You go to a church building to have your flesh gratified, not to be fed. John chapter 7. Now see, one of the, the big problems with these guys is they exalt themselves. They, they, they exalt themselves because they got the education. And they talk down to people and they want you to... And that's what he was trying to do to me. Like I said, yesterday, that spirit of Antichrist and the spirit, capital S, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who dwells within this uh, earthen vessel, collided yesterday. A saint and a devil collided yesterday. And see, like I told you, you've been lulled to sleep by centuries of perversion from Rome and you don't even know it. But these guys, John 7, verses 14 on verse 18. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus is God the Father. The video that was done on Saturday, okay, we talked about how the Lord Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. Wisdom produces knowledge. What wisdom is in these guys? Okay? And Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. And Paul didn't preach what he was taught of men, but of the Lord. Rightly dividing the word of truth is what is taught of the Lord. Trying to jumble everything together, that's of Satan. It's exemplified in the Tower of Babel, okay? Where it's like, let's bring everybody together, build us a tower that will reach unto heaven and make a name for ourselves. God comes down and is like, what you guys know? It's like you guys disperses them. Okay, God's a God of variety. God is a God of distinction. Okay? God is a God of distinction. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? The doctrines that you get from Christianity are doctrines of devils. The doctrine that you get from the saints is of the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the authorized version of the scripture which he gives you. Okay? He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. I feel like Paul for all the people I led to the Lord. I went to Knox Cemetery School. I went to Princeton Theological Cemetery. I went to Moody. You are Moody, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true. No unrighteousness is in him. We preach not ourselves, but Christ the Lord. They're preaching, the, the, they're preaching what Rome gives them. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why do ye go about to kill me? Uh, where, where are we? That was uh, verse 18. Yeah, I, we read verse 19 just because. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. And, here, and here's the thing. Here is the thing. And the devils know this. 
Acts 4, 8 on the first 14. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. We're not building a kingdom today. Rome is building a kingdom today. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. There's that exclusivity again. Now when they, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the ones who hold tradition above scripture, the educated. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men of the things of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the traditions of man, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been See, when two opposing spirits collide like that, you both know which side you are on. Any of you saints who have been out there witnessing to people, talking to people, having any interaction with people, especially the ones who claim to be saved, you, you've encountered that. You've, you know what that is. Okay? It's like I said, like, well, you know, with some of the, well, a lot of the enemies, I know what side they're on, they know what side I'm on. Yes, too deep. You know? When I encountered that guy, that Nate guy over there, you know, when he started talking, I knew right away. It's like, mm. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> yeah, we uh, we knew right away which side we stood on. We did. He stands on the side of Rome. I'm on the Lord's side. Okay. Okay. Let's continue here. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. See, a true saint has the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost, Lord, is that spirit dwelling within them. And when you encompass, encounter one of these guys who has that spirit of antichrist, spirit of this world within them, and boasting their education that's given, in, given to them by Jesuits, and they immediately figure out, it's like, oh, I'm not going to glaze this individual over with my fancy, schmancy rhetoric! And my, uh, you know, the, the, the Greek, the, 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 the Catholic tradition. <laughs> yeah, pal. Yeah. See, they know, brother, sister. The devils know. Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? The devils know who we are. Why? Because we have the Father dwelling within us. A devil will pick that out. Every time. That's the same. That, that devil over there knew that he was talking to a saved man. Vice versa, I knew immediately that I was talking to a lost man who's a religious pastor of the Jesuit order. First Corinthians chapter seven. Ah, first Corinthians, excuse me, chapter one. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 17 on to 21. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Wisdom of words, fancy schman. Like I said, 
There's nothing wrong with having a vocabulary. Nothing wrong with that at all. But see, these Christians are dependent on that to glaze you over, giving you this idea that they have God within them because they're using all these fancy things that you don't know anything about. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Hey, Christian, come here. Uh, in, in your Bible, does it say being saved? <laughs> yeah, all this is best, huh? Being saved. Uh, no, are saved. Are saved. Once saved, always saved. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. What, what is that talking about? Verse 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Like that Nate guy over there. Like any one of these Christian Jesuit trained pastors in these buildings. Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom, what wisdom? There are two wisdoms. Knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Who calls this foolish? Those of the world. To those of the world, that's just a job, a career. And of course, Romans chapter 1, got to throw this in there. Romans chapter 1, verses 22 on to verse 23. <laughs> Professing themselves to be wise, I have been to so-and-so school. I know Greek. Good for you. I know the Lord. Who do you know? How would you know when you are your own standard? Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds, you know, that stupid thing in the Trinity, and four-footed beasts and creeping things. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 on to verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 4 on to verse 17. Excuse me, 14 on to verse 17. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. We are ambassadors for Christ. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, and them that are saved. Hey, Christian, is your Bible? Check! Christian? Check. Does your Bible say being saved there? You need the right book. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved, and in them that perish. To the one, we are the savor of death unto death. They don't want to hear it. Fake. Christian. And to the other, the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? See, you saints are being uplifted. You Christians go to the building. Any Bible will do. God loves you. This is chafing you. It's death to you. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Check your Bible. Pedal. Does it say pedal? Huh? Corrupt the word of God. But as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Christians, corrupt the word of God. How? 
Here you go. Which one? Which one's perfect? These are these are all Greek renderings of New Testament, buddy. Which one? Which Greek? <laughs> if, if you people take nothing away from this video at all, not talking to saints, you lost people who may see this. If you take nothing away from this at all, take away that when you hear a Christian, seriously, say to you, the definitive article Greek. Remember, Nesolon, this is the 26th, is up to 28 or 29. Westcott and Hort, blood clot and fart. Four editions of the United Bible Society's Greek text. And this is what the Bibles are based off of. The scripture is based off of the uh, Texas Receptus. And there are 18 to 19 of these. These agree together more so than any of these do. And this is what the scriptures are based off of. But see, this was a stepping stone to be, you know, you put it there. You have the perfect standard now. We have had since 1611. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 14. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of our, as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, not of the Jesuit order, like with these Christians in the building. Who hath also made us able ministers of the New Testament. And again, testament and covenant are two different things. They're not the same. And a Jesuit trained Christian, cemeterian, wants you to believe they are. It's like saying that uh, charity and liberty are the same. They're not. who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Letter, he's talking about the Ten Commandments. Okay, Christians out there and other people come to this and say, the letter, you mean the letters of Scripture, so you don't need the Scriptures, put them away, shut up. No, it's not that, what, that's not what that's talking about. Not of the letter. We couldn't, we, we covered this in uh, Saturday's video. Okay, about you don't need to keep the law today and stuff like that. He's talking for the letter killeth. The letter. The Ten Commandments. Yeah, it kills you. Because you can't keep them perfectly. That's what this is referring to. But if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones, the Ten Commandments, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? Okay, and what are we reading to on this one? Verse 14. For the ministration of condemnation, for if the ministration of condemnation be glory, condemnation, Ten Commandments, you at your best could never keep the Ten Commandments. The only one who could did, and he is God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one who could and did. Man at his best state is altogether vanity. You can't keep the Ten Commandments even if you try. Condemnation. Much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect. By reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. From faith to faith. Faith in keeping the law. And faith that it is finished. The death, burial, and resurrection. The blood on the cross. Which was not revealed in other ages. Dispensation. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. You know, in witnessing 
some of you who have come to this channel because I met you out there. Plainness of speech, not using fancy schmancy rhetoric or linguistic, linguistical like gymnastics, trying to give off this uh, this impression that I'm an educated scholar or something, and to impress you, it's like oh that guy's he he he, he listen to him. And no, plainness of speech. If the Lord Jesus Christ don't save you, you're going to hell. God doesn't love you. His love's there for you to be had. But he doesn't love you. You reject the gospel, you're going to hell. Plainness of speech. What do these uh, cemeterians do? And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. And somewhere on the channel there is a video, the difference between testament and covenant. I'll find it. Okay? All right. Now also go now to 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 3 on to verse 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, Satan, who runs the cemetery schools and the church buildings, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds. Hey! Satan said, in the day ye eat thereof, do contrary to what God said, your eyes will be open. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Do what he said not to. Eat from that one tree. He never said you couldn't touch it. Don't eat it. They ate it, and here we are. He's blinded the minds. Lost people, their eyes are open, but their minds are blinded. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Ephesians 6.12 Ephesians 6.12 Always remember the address. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Got to remember that myself. That guy over there He's of the devil. He is of that spirit of Antichrist. To be anti is to be against and to replace. He's against the word of God and the God who is. One God can price a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why we are to condescend to men of low estate. Not be wise in our own conceits, like these guys in the buildings are. 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10. This is 3 on to verse 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, like the Christians do. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Carnal means fleshly. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are these strongholds? Casting down imaginations, fables, fairy tales. God loves you unconditionally. And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Well, the Greek. You know, the oldest and best and stuff like that. Which they get from the Jesuit trained cemetery and schools. And bringeth into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. <laughs> Verse 7. 
Do ye look on things after the outward appearance? Because he's got the degree. Huh? Dressed all fancy schmancy. Huh? If any man trusts himself that he is Christ, let him, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ's. We belong to Christ, Lord Jesus. That guy over there, he belongs to that spirit of Antichrist. Let's, I want to show you this. Okay? I want to show you this. Get this up. <laughs> this, this is. All right. I'm not going to put the link for this. This is uh, Grace Gospel Church worship service Sunday morning, making much of Jesus in Woodstock. Which Jesus? Children's Church offered. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now look at that. Look at that. Preaching and teaching Jesus. That's a Catholic portrait. And if you could... He's doing this. Spiritual and temporal. Catholic. Jesus Christ, our foundation. Look at that. Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> Not funny. It's, it's laughable. Sermon on the Mount. That that's the... No, it isn't! Faith is mentioned one time in the Sermon on the Mount. And it's in the form of a rebuke. The faith offered on the Sermon on the Mount was not in the death, burial, and resurrection and bloodshed on the cross. No, it was him as king. He hadn't died yet. And see, during the kingdom of heaven, he's going to be king on the throne in Jerusalem. See, and you don't need faith because you're going to be able to see him on the throne. Ah, ah these guys are devils. These guys are heretics. Okay? All right? And, and yeah, who we are, blah, 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 blah. I want, I want you to see this individual, okay? Right there. I mean, for instruction in righteousness, no. There's nothing wrong with learn, having learning about the Sermon on the Mount for instruction in righteousness. These guys who don't rightly divide the word of truth, I'm sure are against the redemption of the purchase possession, okay? Uh to them, the Sermon on the Mount is the doctrine that they... It's not. They're not rightly dividing the word of truth. That's for the kingdom of heaven. And they got the Catholic Jesus with the two spiritual and temporal thing right there. Okay? These guys are devils. These guys are heretics. But I want to show you this individual's face. Okay? Staff. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, don't. There it is. There it is. Nate. <laughs> That's the guy I met yesterday. Out there. <laughs> Praetor. Nate Praetor. Proverbs 10. Verses 8 on to verse 10. Nate Praetor. I'm sorry. The wise in heart will receive commandments. But a prating fool shall fall. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely. But he that perverteth his ways shall be known. He that winketh with the eyes causeth sorrow. Causeth sorrow. But a prating fool shall fall. I know that's a little mean spirited. But if the shoe fits. But if the shoe fits. Now, I want to read a little bit about this guy that I met yesterday. Nate and his family moved to Woodstick in March 2019 
to help plant a gospel-centered church in Woodstock. What gospel? You did not the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the Vatican, gospel of Rome. Prior to moving to Woodstock, Nate pastored for six years in northern CA, California? Northern California? Is that what that means? A graduate of the Cornerstone Cemetery and Knox Theological Seminary. And right there, you might be like, well, those are not openly Catholic. But see, the Jesuits have infiltrated and control, oper or operate, and manipulate. So, see right there, Knox Theological Seminary. This guy, which Greek, Mr. Uh, which Greek, Mr. Nate Praetor? Which Greek, buddy? Come on there, boy. Huh? Come on there, boy. You're a devil. But Nate, Praetor, I hope you have a great life. Because you're going to hell, son. Because your faith is in man. In the Jesuits, not in God the Father. <laughs> you're obviously a Trinitarian. Let's finish this up. Nate is passionate about Christ. Which one? His church and seeing people experience the freedom found in Jesus. Which Jesus, Nate? Which Jesus? If, if any of you are in Woodstick, avoid this place like the plague. And if you see this guy, avoid him. Oh, and, and one more thing about Nate. In John, uh, 3 John, hmm, verses 9 and 10. I wrote unto the church, the body, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Just what trained guy over there, Nate. Praetor. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. That's going to be it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Uh, again, people, you you got to watch out for these Christians you got to watch out for these Christians and these Christians that are poisoned by the stuff that they get in the buildings from their Jesuit trained pastors. you got to avoid these people. These people are not preaching the true Jesus Christ of the scriptures. And I don't blame you, you lost people for having a thing against Christianity. Because you know why? Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. That's all I got to say about that.